and Mama Wolf. I was born in Pineville, Kentucky, which is also known as Bell County, off the Appalachian Mountains. I was born in a Cherokee family. My grandfather was full-blooded. My dad was half, and they believed my mom even to be one-fourth. I was uh, put up for adoption along with my two sisters when I was three, three years old. For those three years, we would be put in a bathroom and locked away, sometimes a closet. There were days didn't know if we would be eating that day or when we would get food. I would share part of what I had when we did eat with my sister because um, I knew her tummy would hurt when she laid at night. You know, I was her big sister. My job to take care of her. And they would just beat the hell out of us every day. Take us up by the roots of our hair and swing us around the room, and let go, and we go flying. Three years later, we were adopted by a white family. My birth, um, not my birth parents, excuse me, my adoptive parents um, asked the state agent, Miss Bargo, in Pineville, why we were down in the books as biracial because back then there wasn't a Native American you were either white or you were black and if you weren't considered pure white you were black and um, the agent said well they're not Negro they um, have more Native American Ch Cherokee blood than they have anything else. We had really short hair because back then that's what they did. They would take a Native child and they would cut their hair. As I grew up, I learned about the Trail of Tears, and I started learning about the boarding schools and the Stolen Generation, which I was a part of, that was either stolen or taken and forced into adoption. All of these things, one way or another, was so that they wanted to call it something like kill the native, save the man. That being said, I've always remembered my family, my birth family. I've always remembered my people. I've had dreams and nightmares. And I was always wondering and looking. As I got older, I connected 
with a beautiful native woman, Robin Youngblood. And she took me under her wing. She knew I had been abused and what I had been through because I was a native child and now a native woman. And she taught me and not only taught me, but grandmother started teaching me the native ways, the medicine wheel. I started schooling and learning. Went on a vision quest. And through that vision quest, I was shown with a feather, a rainbow feather that I was to start a tribe, Rainbow Warriors, to bring in the new world and the new ways where all tribes and nations come together, not only here in the States, but across the globe. So I did. I started the Rainbow Feather Tribe. We are friends and life family now. We share and everyone gets to have a voice and lay down their heritage and what's been so hard to find. Um, we also do uh, studies and classes of true native ways, the old ways. We share about each of our tribes. We have workshops on herbs and um, natural healing. And um, we also um, uphold the medicine wheel. We pray together and we also are advocates for Mother Earth and the importance of not only here in the States, but across the world of taking care of Mother Earth and how we can all come together to do that. We have a farm to table program to not only grow and teach people to grow their own gardens and food, but how to cook it. And we are just there for each other each and every day. There is a process, um, an application process, but all um, are welcome to apply. And um, yeah, I've been able to follow through what Grandma grandmother predicted but I also know that I and many others in the tribe feel like they have a place and a home and that they found their tribe so thank you for listening and um we look forward to the next new members of the Rainbow Father Tribe.